morning. Here's something slightly different for you. I had to toss this together for myself the other day, so I figured I might as well just film it and uh, put a video out in case it's helpful for some people, because it really ain't no thing since I'm doing it anyway. And that's controlling just a, a single stepper motor for whatever it is you need it for, using uh, just about any Arduino and some real basic code. Now, I know from talking to people that there's a lot of folks out there who they, they've used the Arduino IDE a whole lot. They've used Arduinos a whole lot, but for 3D printing, like in the form of like an Arduino ramps board sandwich that makes up the controller board for their printer. But they haven't really played with doing actual programming in the IDE for anything other than that. And a lot of times it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I'd like to be able to do that, but I just don't feel like learning it or... It might seem intimidating because the whole thing's programmed in like this quasi C++ language that you probably don't know. But it's actually pretty simple. And they have decent guides online. Basically any of the commands that you don't know, you could just pop open your favorite search engine and type in Arduino Digital Write or something like that. And it'll bring up everything that you need to know on their Wika page or forums or something like that. So this is just going to be a basic example using parts you probably have lying around, maybe not the carrier board, but that's pretty cheap. And all we're really doing is showing what we need for the very bare basics of driving a stepper using the step sticks we're familiar with from our printers and some of the factors that are involved there. So it'll give me an opportunity to squeeze a little theory in. Now I'm going to try to put links for all this stuff down in the description of the video, and then I'll have a link to the code, as I promised before in my Patreon. I'm going to have a separate page coming up where it has all the supplemental material for this stuff that like just doesn't squeeze well into a video description, so that you could just grab that and copy-paste it into your Arduino IDE, and then maybe alter it for whatever it is you have to do. So anyhow, not wasting any more time, let's get to it. All right, nerds, so here's what we're gonna do. We're controlling one of these guys with a couple of these things right here, which I'll have links to in the description, using just a few lines of simple code in the Arduino IDE, which you probably have installed already. And here's what we'll need to do it. First off, Arduino, obviously. We need some kind of step stick. I'm using a TMC2130, but whatever. Uh, we are going to need our stepper driver PCB, a uh, power supply for our motor, and obviously a computer to do our programming in, and we need the Arduino IDE installed. Doesn't really matter what version. All right, so item number one, the Arduino. Now, it doesn't really matter which one we use. I mean, Lord knows they have a few, and this code should cover just about all of them because it's going to use, like, low number pin designations. But since we're 3D printing, you probably have one of these which is admittedly overkill for something that's just gonna use a few pins, but it'll work fine for our purposes if you have one around. I mean, even an Uno is overkill and a 32-bit shield is definitely overkill. I mean, probably like a Pro Mini is fine or like one of those Adafruit trinkets if you were gonna get something just to do little projects like this. But if you want something really fast, you might wanna look into one of these guys, which is colloquially called a blue pill board. They're 32-bit, they're many times faster than an Arduino and they only cost a couple bucks. But for this, we're gonna use a Mega because it's probably what you have lying around. And like I said, it doesn't really matter. This is one that I butchered a little bit and it broke the SPI out for Trinamic chips. And porting the code from one board to another is really just as simple as selecting it underneath the pull down menu under tools in the Arduino IDE. So then the step stick, basically use whatever you have lying around. I use a TMC2100 because I don't really use these for printing anymore since they have the more advanced boards, but I have a bunch that I haven't even put together. So I was like, meh, I'll just go ahead and use these. Plus they have the, you know, the stealth chop and the interpolation and all that, that you can play around with. So it offered a little bit more options. And that's going to go in this single driver carrier board that really it just offers us some filtering and a place to plug things in. And since I'm using a silent step stick, I'm going to be using one of these diode protectors called on AliExpress Ultra Silent Protector Plug Type Stepper Motor Driver Step Stick for 3D Printer. Whatever. And here's the little stupid diagram of basically how it's going to work. It has your plug for the stepper on the upper left. It has a couple ins and outs for your Arduino. We're going to be pulling our 5 volt logic right from the Arduino board. It has your typical step direct and enable pins, which are pretty much all we need to control these step sticks. And then the jumpers, instead of being actual jumpers, are these little dip switches on the left, and that's going to control your micro stepping and all that. And as you can see from the capacitor on the board, these will handle up to 50 volts motor voltage, which is good. 
Most step sticks have corresponding labeling on them, so it's pretty easy to plug them in properly. And just as a heads up, one problem that I ran into is they use a different plug for the steppers. So I just, you know, take a little razor blade and I pop this uh, four part DuPont connector off of it and connect these pins directly to the board and insulate them with a little bit of tape so they don't short out to each other because those go on very nicely and they stay in there just fine. It's just that the, uh, the black surrounding plastic won't let you do that. In terms of our power supply, we know that higher voltage is going to equal more torque. So I just grabbed this guy from the thrift store for like a dollar and it'll handle 1.7 amps at 36 volts. And that's pretty good because our, our silent step stick, I think it'll handle up to 40 some volts. So it'll definitely do 36. And then I just do a little bit of surgery on the end here. Clip the, clip the barrel jack off that we don't need and then carefully strip it back and then just plug it in real quick and test the ends of the leads with a multimeter just to make sure you don't swap your negative and your positive backwards and fry your whole action because you know that's bad as we can see right here it's putting out the proper 36 ish volts so we're good to go i know that the white is the positive now I'm just going to put some DuPont jumpers on here, a little bit of insulation on the ground so that doesn't short to anything. I'll put links to the, the crimper tool here, the crimps, the multimeter that I use, and all that nonsense in the description so you could uh, run to Amazon and grab them if you want. And then like I said, we're just going to be powering a 5 volt off the Arduino, and that's just going to be powered off of USB. So now onto the exciting part, the software. Just go to uh, Arduino's website if you don't have it installed for whatever reason and download whatever IDE you need for your operating system. And this code's simple enough that it'll use older versions if you had an older operating system that won't work with the current version. And when you create a new project, it's gonna look just like this, a blank slate. But here's the problem. What are we actually doing? Well, we're ostensibly just sending a pulse signal to our stepper, and we know that each pulse is going to make it rotate by one position. So we're gonna be sending kind of a square wave-ish signal, and right here represents one wavelength. And we have our high signal and we have our low signal, and each of those has to be assigned a duration. Now, step sticks have a particular on time that they need and then a particular off time that they need, or at least that's the minimum that they need. And that'll be dictated by the settings on the actual step stick itself and whatever analog filters they may have coming into it. Essentially, we want to provide ourselves with a high signal and then a delay and a low signal and then a delay for that as well. And then we have an additional delay that we could put at the end or just extend our low signal and that's going to repeat over and over and over again. So that's all to say that our delays are going to dictate our minimum pulse time, that's our high time, and our minimum off time, and that's also going to determine the speed of our stepper. Now first we have to figure out if we want to rotate uh, in single rotations, what exactly that means. So we have a 1.8 degree stepper motor, which is 200 steps per rotation, so 200 pulses per rotation plus micro stepping. In my case, I'm using quarter stepping, so that's 800 steps per rotation. Now we just have to translate that into code. Now I'm going to use our classic contractor's pyramid to illustrate some of the challenges of coding. Now if at one peak we have clean, easy to read portable code, then we have fast running code, and then we have easy to write code, pick two. So if you want clean and easy, it's not going to run that fast. If you want fast and easy, it's not going to be clean. And then if you want fast and clean, it's not going to be easy. So we are going to focus on clean and easy code. So we're not gonna get like 100 megahertz speed out of this, but we're not gonna need that because our stepper motor is probably gonna run out of juice before that. First section we're gonna add up to the top is our definitions. And this is just going to take our um, pins and define the numbers as words that we can read to make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna call it step and direct. Uh, step is a thing, so I'm gonna call it step P and direct P. And then the second part is our one time setup. So this is gonna run before it gets to our main loop. And this is gonna to like toggle our pins off and on and set what mode they are. So we wanna set our step pin to output mode and our direct pin to output mode. And then we're gonna digital write our direct pin high. So that'll send it spinning in a particular direction. And then make sure to leave notes for yourself always so that you know what this nonsense is if you go back and look for it. And then I always add a little delay at the end of a setup just because I'm paranoid like that. 
and now we have to make a loop and you can use a for loop or a while loop uh I'll just use a for loop because it's a little bit easier to wrap your head around. First thing we do is just say int, that's the package type, it's an integer, and we're going to say a, which is our variable, equals zero. And then this loop is going to take us one rotation of the stepper, so we know how many steps we're going to need, it's 800. So every time a is less than 800, you a plus plus, so you advance a, so it's going to count up, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, blah, 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 800 and then start over again. And for each of those 800 cycles, we're going to take our uh, pin, our uh, step pin, and we're gonna digital write our step pin high, and then we're gonna delay. So it's gonna stay high for as many microseconds as we put here. Um, yeah, I just, just typed a thousand, but um, we're gonna change these values later on. Then we're gonna digital write our step pin low, and then after that, set a delay as well. So that's gonna say our off time before we run the cycle again. And I forgot a semicolon because of course I did. Now let's just clean this up a little bit because it looks hideous. Optionally, we can add a delay at the end of this for whatever reason. And then, like I said before, always make notes. So the two slashes, that comments it out. So that's that's comment. It's just you telling yourself something in the code. That's not going to compile into it. And that's important because future, do, future you doesn't know what the heck you were doing. So leave notes for yourself, like the delay here. Oh, maybe I'll tie that into a potentiometer. Maybe I won't. And then always check your work, because as you can see right here, I forgot an enable pin, which means our stepper is never going to turn on. So in our loop, I just wrote a digital write to pin 2, which is going to be our enable, and pulled it low, which is what you need to do to turn your step stick on. Now, before any of you armchair quarterback nerds jump down my throat, I know, look, I know nerds, this is not the most efficient code. Remember, we're going for clean and easy, and it's not going to necessarily run fast. But I'm banking on the thought that it's probably going to run faster than our stepper can handle anyway because of the inductance. If you are trying to make it run stupid fast, there's a lot of ways to do it. You could use a hardware timer, you could optimize your data types, you could use direct port manipulation, you could pre-optimize by unrolling complex loops, you could use a pre-made fast library, etc, etc. But one optimization we will make is one that I think also makes for better clarity as well. And that's when you just put a little hashtag, define, and then the name of your pin, like enable pin, step pin, direct pin, and then the number of the pin. And that's for a couple reasons. The compiler should see that define and optimize it for whatever package is best or smallest or whatever it is you have your uh, compiler set for. And I think having all your defines up top together makes it nice and clean and easy to read. Another change that I'm gonna make just for this example is I'm changing our for loop to a while loop. And while loops are a little bit uh, wackier to look at when you're trying to do it for a particular number of times, but I'm just running this continuously. So I'm just gonna say while one, which means when it's on, it's just always going to run. So that loop will just go over and over and over again. So I can take pretty videos of it for all of you. And when I last checked, like while and do loops were a little bit quicker on Arduino, that may or may not be the case, but it doesn't really matter. So after all that is cleaned up, this is what we ended up with. And I'm going to post all of this code on uh, alexkennis.com, my website and blog, so that you can just go copy paste it if you wanted to use it. Then it's just a matter of putting all of our hardware together. And I'm just going to cut this up and fast forward it so because it's excruciatingly boring watching this. But fast forward is fun. And I'll just stick a zip tie on the end of this so you can see it moving a little bit better. I, let's do this. First, we got to power the Arduino. I already flashed it, so I'm going to run it off of this hub right here instead of attached to my computer so I don't blow my computer up if I did something wonky. And let's give ourselves a countdown. Three, two, one, and please don't blow up. All right, looks like we're working. Now here I put an inductive probe and a counter on it, just so I can get an idea of the RPMs. And about the fastest I can get with this setup is around 400, 450 RPM. To go faster than that, I would have to raise the current or the motor voltage or use a lower inductance motor. And if you want to know how that works, you can look at my first torque testing video. Now, if you looky looky here here at our delay microseconds, you'll see that I set it to two and put a little note after it, not really needed because overhead is four microseconds. Now, 
I originally had this set at a thousand. As you remember, that was just a placeholder. I know if I write a thousand, it's because I'm going to change it later. But we have to have a minimum time, depending on our step stick, of an on time for that pulse to register properly. And in our case, the Arduino's overhead for that call is around four microseconds. So we don't actually need that delay at all. I just set it there just because. And then the second part is our delay microseconds at the bottom. And as you can see, I said 200 microseconds equals slightly over 400 RPM because I timed that out. So that's going to be basically our motor control. And I found that I can set this down as low as about 163 microseconds before the pulses go so fast that the stepper motor itself can't respond. And this is a nice simple way to test a stepper motor that you're going to use in a 3D printer because you can set this down, uh, do the math for the RPMs, and see what kind of speed you can expect before your motor just kind of farts out. So if you build this setup yourself and you uh, hit go and the motor just goes Meh, and it doesn't move or it twitches back and forth, you know you're going to have to make a longer delay microseconds time for your low signal. Thanks for sticking around. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd also appreciate it if you would check out my support links because that's what makes this channel possible. And I'll be getting some more videos out real soon. So until then, get out there and make something awesome.